you've been following my Small Business Matters presented by RBC, you know that my podcast, I go across the country and I talk to entrepreneurs. But I also use the video platform to talk to people that are right in the center of what's happening with our economy today and what's going to happen going forward. One of the best places to look is associations because the people who run associations have got their pulse on all their members, all the supply chain that goes in it, and obviously the way they're dealing with government to try to make things happen. One of the best association heads I've ever met, Ann Cothwell, is going to join me from the Convenience Industry Council of Canada. Ann, welcome to the, uh, the video. Thanks, Tony. Great to be doing this. Thank you. So the first thing I want to congratulate you on is that you managed to get convenience in many places in Canada considered essential. So they're staying open. What does that mean for your members and uh, what kind of changes have you had to make? Well, I think one thing I'll say about our members and about convenience stores generally is that they really show that they're resilient and innovative. You know, they've done things like change up their product mix. They're focusing more on basic groceries. So, you know, that's, that's been great because they've recognized that they need to adapt to the current situation. And is there any downside? Is it, is it because they're all open? Or, I mean, for example, if I'm a convenience store and I rely on motorists, I have to believe that that business is suffering. Absolutely. And those are the ones that have been particularly hard hit. And especially when you look at our uh, gas stations, for example, in Atlantic Canada, where they've got the double whammy because they're also dealing with a regulated price of gas. So the gas that they paid for and the gas that they can now sell, there's a huge difference in terms of, so those guys are literally underwater. And we're actually asking government to step in because those, especially in rural communities, sometimes they're the places that people need to go, including healthcare workers, to fill up in order to go to the hospital or go to their place of work. Now, I want to also talk about supply chains. There's a lot being written. Uh, Justin Trudeau today came saying keeping an eye on meat. Everybody's got this sense of concern that from the farm to the plate, there's some problems. And you're right at the front of that, obviously, because you bring in a lot of products into your store. What are you hearing? And what should we be thinking about as Canadians going forward, knowing that we just live in a country where up until now, whatever we wanted was within a store's reach? That's right. And, and again, that's always been our business model. We, you know, we're there, we're convenient, we're there when you need us. Uh, but now it's really about the, what are those essential items? And so absolutely, it's the entire supply chain. Manufacturers have made changes. They've, you know, they've adapted. And uh, instead of the single serve, because there's not a lot of commuter traffic and not a lot of people just sort of popping in for a snack before going to work. So they're maybe doing a bigger bag of chips for the family uh, to watch a movie or watch Netflix. Um, and then the distributors, I mean, those are the guys that keep, make, make sure that the shelves are stocked, right? They're there to be commended because they're working crazy hours just trying to keep up and to make sure that their customers have food and supplies on the shelves. So today, um, you know, our prime minister was, you know, again, talking about how he's going to bring uh, help to different areas of the sector. One area that, he, that surprised many was this, uh, the, the money going to students. A lot of people felt it might have been better to put it in terms of lower tuition next year, because as the economy opens up, we want these students working. We want them to be building resilience. We want them to have that well, now your industry relies a lot on part-time workers. What are your thoughts on, on uh, what's happened in terms of uh, your access to labor that might be sitting back going, I'm already getting paid. I'm not sure I need to go to work. Right. Well, and it's, and it's a really fine balance, right? I mean, governments on the one hand have done an outstanding job of moving quickly and making sure that businesses and individuals are getting the help that they need, which is so critical. Uh, but with that speed, you know, comes a few unintended consequences. And one of those is certainly with respect to students or even other workers, when you're, you know, has an industry, we're essentially competing uh, with government. So we wanna make sure that there isn't a disincentive for some of, some of the students that perhaps would work more hours. Are they gonna restrict their hours because they figure they'll work a few hours less and then they'll collect money from the government. So we are speaking to government to make sure that that doesn't end up happening because that obviously creates a problem for us. 
like it, it might create a problem for us for decades to come because this is the generation and the age where we want to really people have going out and earning a paycheck and feeling great about it. I want to ask the final question I have is about the entrepreneurs. I've been a huge fan of your sector and I, I love the fact that a lot of times you go in as that first generation Canadian. Uh, they're, they're, th this is their dream. They've come to Canada. They've invested. They're building a convenience business. Sometimes they end up owning two or three. What I'm frustrated with, though, is that it, they always seem to be uh, sometimes the second second place. I mean, you know, when we in Ontario, when we brought out beer and wine, it was the grocery stores, not the convenience stores. So, what can we do as a collective community to say? Not only are they convenient, they are essential right now. And come post COVID, we want to make sure that they have the products that they feel will serve their marketplace and maybe get rid of some of the shackles that have prevented them from being uh, the success they could be. Absolutely. I mean, I think if we really look at it, for example, in Ontario, if we had been able to sell beer and wine uh, in our convenience stores, that might have been one less trip out for different consumers in a given week right? They could have actually bought more things that they needed in that one stop at their local store. And I think increasingly local is going to be so important. And so the, the notion of restricting our ability to sell products rather than allowing us to sell more products kind of seems counterintuitive in this kind of environment. Uh, speaking with uh, Ann Kothawala, she's the CEO of Convenience Industry Council of Canada. And I hope that as we move forward as a nation where I'd love to see can it, the convenience sector to wrap itself in a big maple leaf flag and have more made in Canada products and really celebrate the local businesses in their area and do whatever we can to say, we're not just convenient, we're essential. We're essential today because it's tough to get out, but in the future, we're also gonna be essential because all these young entrepreneurs are gonna have a chance. And thank you so much for being part of this video. Thank you, Tony. And what I'm going to leave you with is, is this video that Anne has produced, uh, thanking some of those frontline workers she talked about earlier. So uh, here's, here's to everybody out there every day that's making it possible for us to, uh, to eat and survive uh, this craziness called COVID.